Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. So far this December I've played mono black, I've played mono green, I've played mono red, even played mono white depths. Well, to complete the set I have tried to brew up a mono blue depths deck that I think has some legs and this is what I've come up with. So, we are not fully into the depths. We've got three copies of depths and three copies of stage, which is still plenty because we've got a whole bunch of blue cards to find them, like Brainstorm and Ponder, along with a Fetch Land, Basic, and Mystic Sanctuary mana base. But the rest of the deck is something relatively familiar. It's Mono Blue Stifle Nought. So we have these Dreadnoughts that we can put into play via Dressdown or Stifle to get ourselves a massive creature that can end the game really quickly. So you're going to get the theme here is massive creatures that end the game quickly. We also have some Merktide Regents as another threat. So we've basically got three principal threats in Marit Lage, Frexion Dreadnought, and Merktide Regent. Now, what do all these things have in common? Well, they should all be power seven or greater, which means not of this world becomes a free counterspell for us. And that's kind of how we're trying to bridge the gap between Stifle Nor and Dark Depths. That sort of technology here so some decks have run things like stubborn denial which we do have in the sideboard if we need extra copies of that sort of effect but this is just a free spell and what we're trying to do is make a big monster smash our opponent in the face with a big monster whilst keeping them off balance with force of wills force of negations and dazes we've got a couple of borrowers as well to bounce some stuff out and we can adjust our interaction in the sideboard whether we need a little bit of removal some graveyard hate um counter spells Counter spells for different things, different counter spells, etc. etc. We're pretty heavy on counter spells as a mono blue deck. Now, in order to fit in this dark decks package, we've had to remove a couple of spells from like your standard sort of stifle nought decks, as well as adding um, the stage and depths. That does mean we have to lose the wastelands, which is a really important tool that helps, but hopefully we are just going to be getting our opponent dead. So not having wastelands is a little bit concerning for the sort of stifle not strategy but you know you've got to make your concessions where you can we're trying to fit in a powerful thing with tutors to help us not tutors uh cantrips to help fuel and find our powerful thing that we can do like hitting our opponent for one turn is much better than two turns obviously dreadnought is probably a little bit easier to set up especially since one of the ways is a cantrip and this can also mess up things like as a saga which is definitely something that's worth wastelanding so we can kind of deal with that in a different way. So that's about where I'm at here. The days will definitely set us back sometimes in terms of trying to get to our Dark Depths combo. But it's just a really powerful card that we can utilize here. And if we're playing an early Dreadnought, backing up with the days as well, we could have potentially have two pieces of, th of free disruption, maybe even three pieces of free protection for our big Dreadnought or whatever. So that's going to be quite good. Whether or not we're going to be able to get our Merktai Regents being big enough, so that they get protected by not this world like i think we should be able to but it might be a little bit longer to get them going than you would expect in a deck like delve where it has dragon's rage channels to help rifle through decks i did consider playing some thought scours to help out there but i decided against it in the end and we you know we have other things to be getting on with right so this is mono blue turbo depths is it turbo depths not really it's mono blue Phyrexian Depth Nought. I don't know. I think of a pithy title, hopefully, for the thumbnail. But anyway, like and subscribe, and let's just jam this beautiful monstrosity. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use, and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? All right, so we're opening hand for game one. We have one land. We don't have a ponder, so we're going to be relying on our Brainstorm to get things done here. Brainstorm is a powerful card, though. So I think we keep this and go for a turn two brainstorm. We might have to do a turn one brainstorm if our opponent is looking like they're going to be playing a Orcish Bowmasters. But we also have another draw step to find another land here, or two draw steps even. All right, and there's a Saga. All right, I can live with that. Mystic Sanctuary, that's not a great one to have here. All right, let's pass the turn. We've got a decent amount of protection. We've also got a very good answer to... A bunch of constructs we don't need to burn a stifle on this if they're just going to be making constructs if our opponent's just making constructs and i think we are in a good position okay this strikes me as a painter deck so what are we supposed to do here we could force of will this i think i'm down for that this is a tutor as well 
Right, so we're going to do a brainstorm. We're going to do a brainstorm now. I guess we don't need to. We can just hold up the dress down. Because if they play, a, if they put a painter into play and we dress down in response to the painter coming into play, they never get to name a colour with it. And then we can still brainstorm at end of turn. And hopefully we can throw away this Mystic Sanctuary soon. So we don't really want that for a while. We could get a Pithy Needle here, which would be annoying. Do I believe our opponent's getting a Pithy Needle? How annoying is it if they do get a Pithy Needle here? Honestly, if they get a Pithy Needle instead of a Grindstone, I don't mind that. Yeah, there's the Grindstone. They want to mill us. That's really interesting. That is really interesting. Um... Sure, we'll cast a brainstorm in response because then we can get these cards milled off if we want them. Um, so we don't really want these two. Well, is Dress Down better than Not of This World? But Not of This World is not great in this matchup. Uh, maybe it is the Mystic Sanctuary that goes here. Sure. So we're going to mill a bunch of cards here. So we're going to mill these two, and then if they're going to keep doing this sort of stuff, we can keep milling some more. We can also put. Um, Cards the same colour back if we want them more, if they're going to continue doing that sort of play. Alright, let's just settle in here. This might be a little while before we find a threat. But we can just sort of start cycling these if we feel the need. There's a plateau. Okay, so this is going to be the red-white bill with 4th Eolingus. How much do I care about this Goblin Welder? Right now, I think it's okay. I don't think that's where our fight is. This feels a bit like bait. I don't think we need to cycle this just yet. Dark Depths, okay. Let's see how this turn plays out. So they can mill us or themselves. So if they mill themselves, they can do more with this welder. Let's see. Okay, they're milling us. Okay, so they're just trying to power out our own Merc Tide Regents or see what our deck's doing. That's interesting. I'm not convinced that's the right play for them. City of Traitors. Obviously, we don't know what's in their hand. Um, let's crack this. Go and get a basic... Island. Cast this dress down, which is quite likely to eat a pyroblast here. There is the pyroblast. So we will counterspell this pyroblast by pitching this dress down. I would like the card draw off of this, and if the painted servant's in play, then they can't be uh, weldering it back in again because they could just kill us if this comes into play. So if this goes in the graveyard with a counter spell, they can activate this for three and then swap it with the well with the painter. This being in play but with without being able to name anything is much better for us. We do have a stifle to bias turn here. I would like to find a thespian stage this turn. That would be great. Um, okay, I guess we're playing out this island. Or do you want to keep two things? I was trying to think if we want to keep two things back to put with a brainstorm if we draw one. Yeah, I think we probably do want to just keep two things. How many islands do we have in our deck? Five? Are they going to target us again? They are. Okay. Friction Dreadnought, Brazen Borrower. Still no Thespian stage. So we're, we're getting towards the odds of hitting it now. We're through a third of our deck. Right, they're going to bash us. Yep, here comes the bashing. Powerful bashing. Kind of wish we had pitched this days rather than the... Dress Town. That was a little bit sloppy from us. We could start removing counters from this, but I don't think that's necessarily going to get us anywhere. All right, let's play another island, so we've already got two things to throw away. Maybe we will start removing counters, but I don't think we're going to... We don't, well, we don't have ten turns in this game. So it's just clicks for the sake of clicks, really. All right, they're manually grinding us again. Oh, we can make a big Merc side. Okay, there's a Thespian stage. I do believe we still have an island. One island, two island, three, four, five. Okay, now we don't have another island, actually. This Lotus Petal is bad news for us. Because this allows them to sacrifice this. They can swap out the painter for the petal, and then next turn they can do the other way around and kill us. So the Stifle might be quite useful to make us live another turn. It's getting a little bit tough for us. Another Stifle. That can buy us a turn. We've got plenty of mana. So in our opponent's end step, they're going to activate this Lotus Petal, then they're going to swap it with the Painter here. Right, they like to Grindstone us here, sure. Dark Depths and a Dreadnought. Struggling a little bit to find any action here, we're just sort of bombing out on lands. I was kind of worried we didn't have enough lands, but now I'm thinking maybe we've got too many. But we'll see. 
Our fetch land doesn't actually have any fetchables now because they did mill one of our islands. So this is just a shuffle, which is fine. I don't mind paying one life for a shuffle. Right, they're attempting to mill us here. And they're going to weld it in response. So we can stifle this welder activation. Pyroblast. There is a pyroblast. All right, and we stifle this welder activation again. All right. They can just redo that next turn, though. So not feeling amazing about this. A ponder. Pleased to see you, ponder. We need some help. Uh, I don't mind the brainstorm. Right, so then we'll crack this. We have no targets here, I believe. But we do want the shuffle. Close strand and a force of negation. Neither of these are going to be enough to get us there, I don't believe. Um, okay. I believe our opponent is just going to go for it again and then we'll die. But maybe they'll be, be cagey because we've brainstormed and fixed some things up. But the way they've been playing this, I think they will just go for it here. Alright, that's the game, I think. Oh, a mono blue deck into a deck with seven main deck pyroblast is not really where I want to be. Uh, Graphic's Cage is good here. Extractions are good. Dismembers are good. Hydroblasts are great. Uh, I don't like two for one counters in this matchup when they've got a million Pyroblasts, so they, those can get right out. Dress Down's pretty good. I don't like Days that much here either because they've got so much fast mana. And this gives us one more thing we can find. So I'm thinking a counterbalance to try and get a little bit of value on there. And that looks fine to me. We are on the play, so days can get a bit more useful, but our opponent's probably going to play around the days anyway. Because they've seen it, because they milled over some dazes. And, you know, they've got loads of artifact mana, so they can pay around days quite easily. Right, what does our hand do? We kill a thing, but we haven't really got any cantrips or anything. I think we're just going to mulligan this. Um, it seems acceptable. I don't think we need a knot of this world yet. Not this world, also not great in this matchup. We have a lot of tools that don't really line up well here. Not this world can protect against a pyroblast on a merc tide though, so that's worth keeping just for that. All right, we're looking for a little bit of action, and we also just want to put cards in our graveyard so merc tide becomes good. Um, do I want all these sorts of things? I don't mind having another brainstorm. I think that's okay. We can have a brainstorm and a land. We don't really want that stifles on top, so we can. Brainstorm to look two more cards past that and then put at least a stifle back. As we put out a land, we can do this in our opponent's turn. The only thing we miss out on here is if we have like a ponder, but I think it's worth holding up interaction when we have a bunch of it. Where are the Fraction Dreadnoughts of yesteryear? Fable of the Mirror Breaker. We could stop them getting a thing here if we want to. I think what we do here is brainstorm first. Um, this is good, this is good. Um, do we care about them having a 2-2 guy that gives them treasure? So we can stifle that trigger if we want to. Um, I think Brainstorm goes here. Uh, we put the Dress Down and then the Brainstorm. I wouldn't mind keeping a Brainstorm around for later. Uh, do I want to stifle this? Do I want that Brainstorm on top? That's kind of the question here. Hmm. Right, let's... I think this is worth stifling. We let's resolve first, don't we? Just stop them getting them, their guy. So we can choose to do this... We can choose to make a 12-12 now. Like the Borrower is kind of interesting. Alright, let's just play a Dreadnought. Stifle that. Have a massive lad. They do have an Ancient Tomb. Ticking away at their life total. Like they need six mana to do the full combo in one go. All right, fourth your Lingus is gone. Red Blast is gone. Can we bash them with a big lad? Okay, it's a plow. So these uh, red white builds have definitely been picking up in Steam lately, and plow is a bit of an annoying one for us. A dark depths. Okay, we can borrow something. We can dress down got some options available to us. We're unlikely to get killed by a beatdown from our opponent due to our 30 life, but that's not really what concerns me. It's the the combo smashing us down. Okay, so we can deal with the Ezra Saga due to dress down, but it's again it's more of the what comes out of it. Ah 
Goblin Engineer. I think I would want to dress this one down. We've got Pyroblast. They do have a Pyroblast. All right. Can have their Engineer. Just going to put the Painter's Servant in their graveyard. Yep. Yikes. Going to need a little bit of help here. Brainstorm that. That often ends up being help. Let's find out. Thespian stage is nice. That gives us a win next turn before this pops off. And then we can put a Merc... A, I guess the Merc Tide goes on top here. It's kind of our backup threat. We have to decide which of these two pieces of... In Actually, we don't get to keep either of them right if we're going to crack this Misty Rainforest. So I guess we put the Merc Tide back. And do I want a Brazen Borrow or a Stifle? I think... Brazen Borrower on a hold is going to be more useful. All right. Our opponent has to kill us this turn, which is sadly a thing that might be possible because they can pay one mana to Goblin Engineer to get a copy of Goblin Engineer. And they have two red mana, so they can go and get both of their pieces. And they have one, two mana left over. So they would need a third piece of mana here. I think they're one mana short at present. All right, so now they can do the combo here. Soul Guide Lantern. Okay. That's all right. I think they had us beat here if they reflection their Goblin Engineer. Obviously, we can Brazen Borrow with that and mess with them a little bit. But one mana gets this. One mana gets the other one. They have two mana left over. I guess they could have a Suman Spirit Guide and could be like sandbagging us. I don't think we have the choice to play around this. Because if we give them another turn, their Ezra Saga pops off and then they definitely beat us. Um, I don't think having any of these on top would really help. I don't really think I want to stifle. No, I think we're just going to make our friend here. Like Brazen Borrower does similar things to stifle. Let's keep this one. That do we get to swing and win here? We do. Um, I think our opponent just messed that one up. So if they have two mana here. So they have three colourless mana. So for one of that mana, they copy this. This puts the grindstone into their graveyard. Then they have one colourless left over and this colourless mana. Um, yeah, one and two. So they have two red mana. So this red mana goes into this Goblin Engineer and turns this into a grindstone. And then they have one, two, three mana here. So this three mana activates the grindstone. And then the other Engineer swaps it for a Painted Servant. So they had a chance at winning the game there. Now, obviously, our Brazen Borrow breaks that up, but that buys them. That buys us one more turn. All right. Sideboarding. I don't think we want to do anything different here, necessarily. Maybe another counterbalance over one of these Not of This Worlds. They do have the Plows, though. So I'm kind of more into Not of This World than maybe I... See, yeah, maybe we do want the Not of This Worlds because of the Plows. Do we want something like a Stubborn Denial? Maybe that's going to be better than counterbalance here. Uh, I still like the dress downs and the hydro blasts. Yeah, I think this is all fine. Let's go back in. Uh, I'll keep this. We've got the hydro blast. We can use the brainstorm to hopefully put this mystic sanctuary back. And then we're just going to work our way towards a Merc tide, I think. All right. What is our opponent going to lead off with? Just a saga. That's acceptable. A ponder. I think we hold up hydro blast in case they play something we do need to respond to. All right, there is that saga. There is the plateau. A goblin welder. Let's say no to goblin welder. Not to this world. All right, so we're going to go for this brainstorm. We're looking for a fetch land. We found a fetch land. We found a dreadnought. That's pretty good. So we're going to put back this mystic sanctuary. That's the first one that we're definitely throwing away. I like to have the one manner interaction of the stifle here. Are we? Merc hiding soon, or is the plan just to Dreadnought next turn with not of this world back up? That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, let's try and ride this Dreadnought. Let's put those back. Play this one out, and pass. I think we can stifle the Urza Saga fetch and use our dress down the turn after as a strategy. Okay. And there's an Arab Mesa. So this could be something like a Fable Mirror Breaker. Or it could just be a fourth Eolingus for one. A Mox Opal. Okay. There's the Fable. Sure. 
So do we want to try and stick this dress down into play and play our Dreadnought? Or do you want to try and play this dress down? And then I think we're supposed to just play the dress down here. So the Stubborn Denial will be countering all non-creature spells if we get to untap. And we have a Novice World to hope that we do get to untap with our Dreadnought. All right, I'm feeling this. This is the crucial turn, I think. I think our fortunes pivot on this. Okay, they got rid of two lands and then played another land. Are they on the defensive here? They are on the defensive. Let's not have this world this. Have another plow. That'd be kind of annoying. Red, red. Painter's servant. Okay, so this is going to name blue? Yeah, okay. Okay, so they want the treasure more than they want their blocker. Uh, more than they want this uh, body, which is understandable. We will gobble this up. Because this gives them metal craft. It means they can combo if they draw grindstone. But we have an answer to grindstone. Uh, Mertide Regent, we don't need to cast that. Uh, we can ponder. Or we could brainstorm here. I'm going to brainstorm. Okay, I don't really want this Mertide Regent. And we'll get rid of one of the lands. Uh, we'll put the other way... Mm. No, I think we're definitely going to be cracking this, aren't we? I think they should, should have gone the other way around. But we just need to survive one turn, so it's just a case of having the maximum amount of protection here. So we have an answer to any red spell. We have an answer to any non-creature spell. And they do not have enough toughness to absorb our Fraction Dreadnought. Is this a Desperation for the Olingus? It is. Let's Hydroblast that. That should be game. They've got 5 toughness, we've got 12 power. So if I can do maths, that should be lethal. I'll crack this in upkeep. Right, our opponent's had enough. Sure. Um, yeah, we managed to get there, actually. That was uh, quite impressive. I think a lot of our... We managed to get a Dark Depths win and a Phyrexian Dreadnought win. So we've already done the things that we wanted to do with this deck. So let's cruise on to round 2. Uh, this hand is going to rely on our Brainstorm to do a lot of work. We're on the draw... If this was Ponder, I think I'd keep this, but I'm not sure I do with just the Brainstorms. Because we could just get trapped underneath a Bowmaster and these become real awkward for us. Mm. I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence on this. I guess we'll try it out. If we get to do Brainstorm stuff, then we'll be okay. Wooded Foothills. This could be pretty much anything. Alright. Birds of Paradise. So we're looking at most likely some kind of cradle control. That's all the most popular Birds of Paradise deck. But we'll see. A dress down. That could be useful down the line. So we had an option there of brainstorming around a potential Orcish Bowmasters. But I'm happy to play this a little bit slower and then we can just do a dress down end of turn next turn. And then we can do brainstorms and Phyrexian Dreadnoughts all at the same time. This also gives us a bit more reactive play if our opponent plays something else that we think, oh, we have to deal with this. What is this going to be? A Green Sun Zenith where X equals 1. Do I care about a Green Sun Zenith where X equals 1? I don't believe so. Allosaurus Shepherd. An Aerovish Reclaimer. Sure. I think we are going to brainstorm at end of turn now. It feels like our opponent might be gearing up for a Crater Hoof play. Wouldn't mind getting some resources in. Okay. I don't hate what we have available to us right now. I think we're just going to put Island Island on top, or Stage Island. Like we have to draw through them anyway. Right, so we have Dress Down, which turns on our Force of Will. Let's see what our opponent goes for this turn. If they just go for a Natural Order, we could potentially blow them out with the Dress Down here. It does make it harder for us to get this Dreadnought into play, though. That's the only issue. We could bounce the, the Shepherd. So do it in natural order. So we can bounce this Allosaurus Shepherd and then counterspell this, pitching our Brainstorm. I don't mind that. I want to use this Dress Down to make our Fraction Dreadnought do stuff. All right, so we're probably going to take one damage from this Reclaimer. So we're going to draw a Thespian Stage now. Are we supposed to play the Thespian Stage in case the next card we draw is a Dark Depth? I think we are. So I'll play the Thespian Stage. Gives away potentially a little bit of what we're doing. But I think that's not the end of the day, end of the world. So we want to play this dress down in our opponent's end step, but 
it's an emergency thing if we need to do something else. There is an Allosaurus Shepherd. I'm going to play a Grist or something here. Feels like a Grist. There it is. Okay. Well, I think this changes how we need to play this game now. So we need to play the Borrower and then start attacking the Grist. Although we could just get our Dreadnought going. Because we have the Knot of this World to protect against the Grist. Uh, hold on, it says green spells you control. But abilities like this are, are fair game. Alright, so I think we will get a dress down in. Murky Boy, not too shabby. Another Knot of this World, certainly not an unwelcome sight. So we can play this Dreadnought. We can protect it with Knot of this World twice. And they'll also have to sacrifice a creature. So we'll be getting a little bit of value there. We can deploy a Brazen Borrower. This can usually gobble up a Crater Hoof as well, a lot of the time. Right, they're just creating a token, that's interesting. It's got another Natural Order here. Is that going to be good enough to beat us? Could be. Uh, this is four creatures, so each one gets plus four. We've got the biggest one. Four, eight, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. That is going to be lethal, isn't it? We've got this. Seven plus... Yes, yeah, so this is going to be lethal. That is unfortunate. All right. So we're on this sort of deck, are we? Uh, Graft Digger's Cage stops them from natural ordering, so we definitely want some of those. This member kills the guys we care about, so we definitely want some of those. Um, problem is, some of our tools aren't amazing here. Um, how much... Uh, we're on the play, so dazes do get a little bit better, but they're not great here. We're at least taking out two dazes. I think I'm kind of... I'm half dazes here or not. Trim one knot of this world. Like, the Force of Wills and stuff aren't great. I don't think we have better choices is the problem. We could play some Stubborn Denials over Not This Worlds and try and catch some Green Sun Zenith and that sort of jam, as well as it also being a protection spell. I think that's acceptable. I will try like this. Um, this is a turn two Dreadnought with a little bit of protection. Like that race is pretty hard. We do have to play a turn one Mystic Sanctuary, which always makes me sad. We've got the Force of Negation and we've got the Daze. I'd rather not have to Daze because obviously picking up a coming to play tap land feels terrible. Once upon a time, I think we are not counterspelling this. Green Sun Zenith is worth a counterspell if it's X equals one. Obviously Natural Order worth a counterspell too. Windswept Teeth from our opponent. We are cracking it immediately for a basic land. Okay, so they're worried we might have wastelands. A green sun zenith for Dryad Arbor. I think that's acceptable. Our plan here is make massive yacht and then beat down over a couple of turns. It does make our days worse. Such is life sometimes. Right, so hold priority to make sure this doesn't go wrong. We'll play a Fraction Dreadnought. We will stifle the trigger on the Fraction Dreadnought and we will pass. We have Days and Force of Negation available. Days obviously comes at a very real cost of bouncing our Mystic Sanctuary, which is our only blue source at present. So that would shut us off of things like Stifle next turn. So I'm more inclined to try and Force of Negation, but if we get a spot where Days actually does something, then maybe we should take that opportunity. Stifle can be pretty useful against a Crater Hoof trigger as well. There is another Windswept Heath from our opponent. Leaving the Cradle in hand for now. A bayou. This is going to be a grist. This is a creature. So we can't hit it with force of negation. So the only thing we can hit it with is this daze. We'd love to draw an island. How many feel a little bit safer here? Did not draw an island. We did draw something useful. So we have force of will and force of negation up. And our opponent just has to not get rid of our creature this turn. Um, this does not stop us, so we let this go. There's only three toughness. Alright, so they have Cradle. That's the two mana. So they could Natural Order here, but we do have that covered. A Green Sun Zenith. We will use the Inflexible Counter Spell here. This way, if they try and fail a summer, we can deal with that. Alright, they've conceded. Excellent. Um, so we just go back in again. Uh, dazes feel even worse at this point though, so maybe we don't want the dazes. 
And we're more looking for the Not of This World to protect our guy. I can buy that. Well, our opening hand for this game is definitely not a keeper. So I did put the Dark Depths in as spell slots, pretty much. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I removed four Wastelands and two spells from like a typical build to fit in our six lands. So it's not like this is where we would normally have a land. So we're going to mulligan this one. Got a counter spell. We've got a brainstorm. It's probably going to be required to do a lot of work here. Uh, I think we keep this and throw back a Merc Tide. I'm not a big fan of this hand, but I think it's acceptable. Okay, so I've got a Bayou. They're ramping out with a Dried Arbor. That's acceptable to us because our Force of Will will just hit something good. We don't have to hit the things that take them out of Daze range. Whereas if we're trying to play around Daze's, try to play around with our Daze's, and that's something that we might think about hitting. This is always getting us an island. So I'm going to get it now just in case they run a one-off Opposition Agent and draw it. So I have a Brainstorm. We could fire the Brainstorm off to get around Orcus Bowmasters. That is certainly a possibility. But I think I'm okay to see what our opponent does and then react that way. We can also Force of Will a Bowmasters if we need to. There is a Cradle that taps for mana. Two mana coming our way. What is this going to be? A Fiend Artisan. That definitely does a lot of tricksy stuff here. Feels like I might be walking into a Veil of Summer here. I feel somewhat powerless. Uh, I don't think Borrower is where I want to be. I think we're going to send the Borrower. No Veil. Okay. Right, in, our end, in their end step, I think we'll brainstorm because if we can set up Dreadnought and stuff. Oh, nice. Um, everything's wanted. I guess we don't want the Merc Tides. That can go on the bottom. And then we just put another Dress Down down there. Right, so we'll play a Stage. And then we'll dress down our opponent's end step. And then we can untap with Dreadnought and Stifle available. We could have just played a Dreadnought this turn. But I like having the, the dress down up. Maybe this going a turn slower will cost us. We'll see. They could natural order here. Part of me wants to start this, but I'm not going to. No. I don't think we were supposed to stifle the... An Outland Liberator. Um, that's a perfect example of why we have a Stifle. And why I want to hold it up this way. Okay, we're going to take one from the Dried Arbor. Yeah, get the Dried Arbor Beats. Right, let's cast our Dress Down. Let's deploy the Dreadnought. I think we need to get greedy with a Brainstorm here. Let's just pass. If they Outland Liberator, we can Stifle that. Do we want to tap on their Dried Arbors if they're going to... Natural order here. We have a stifle, so we can stifle the ability of it if it's something we want to stifle. I imagine it's probably a Traxxer. If we stifle it, we lose our Dreadnought, which is awkward. I think what we're trying to do here is draw a land. Okay, so it's just a Crater Hoof. So how big are these things going to be? So this is going to be... I think we're better off keeping our Dreadnought alive here. So if they sack this to kill this, then all of a sudden their attacks are terrible. Tap an arbor for mana. I think they mean to attack here. Sure. Right, we'll block this. They might just let the nine damage ride and then blow this up, up post combat. This is quite a large blowout. Love to find. Alright, they've just had enough. The stifle blowout, too good. Alright, we're 2 0 versus uh, Painter and Cradle Control. Pretty exciting. Uh, let's go to round three. We are on the play for round three. Island Ponder, I've, I've heard that's a keep. So uh, this does seem fine. We've, we've got some dress down. So as long as we find other land, we can start drawing some extra cards. We've got a little bit of protection available to us as well. So we don't just get bopped by some sort of combo deck. This seems like a keeper to me. Let's see if I regret it after casting this Ponder. I believe in the heart of the cards there. Days, Stifle, Thespian State. I would like the Thespian stage. Do I want a Daze? Not really. Do I want a Stifle? Not really. I think this is in any order. And Shuffle. Alright. Maybe that's Greedy not taking that land there. Maybe we're going to get punished really hard. A Lotus Petal. Okay. Just going to be the Epic Storm. Black Man. A Basic Swamp. Faithless Looting. Uh, this is going to be a reanimator, I believe. So I think we pitch our borrower. 
Or a dress down. Probably a dress down. I'm trying to hit the enablers here. So they can't put stuff in the graveyard, then all their other spells don't work. Land? Not a land. But it's a ponder. Kind of similar. Alright, this is a lot tastier. Um, I do like all of these cards. We're definitely taking the land. It's a case of what we take to go with it. Um, I think we'll put the ponder, then the brainstorm. And then we'll pass the turn. We have a daze to get us through this turn. Feels like our opponent was somewhat all in on that. We can just dump a Murktide into play next turn. Grief. Uh, we cannot dump a Murktide into play. It's probably going to be taken right now. Right, we can have a 6-6 six, six Murktide if they don't take it here. Backed up by some cards. I think the choice here is definitely the Murktide though. They took the Borrower. Very interesting. All right, they're going to take the Murktide as well. All right, that makes more sense. So the top card of our library is a Brainstorm. Um, how do I feel about the cards we have available to us right now? Would I like to Brainstorm or would I like to hold up a dress down? I think we are Brainstorming here. Not this world. That's pretty bad. We don't really want this daze either. Think about it. We'll crack this and go get another island. Cast this Ponder. Keep fishing for something. Uh, any order. We do not want these cards. Um, all right, opponent. How do you feel about me just playing a Dark Depths out? That might confuse them a little bit. Might take a little bit of damage. If it's just Grief Beats, then I think we can probably win. Like, we'll eventually find something to win the game with. Um, a Misty Rainforest. Am I playing this out? Or am I holding this open for Brainstorm purposes? I think we're playing it out because we want to get to um, Mystic Sanctuary. So we can put something like a Brainstorm on top. And get this daze out of our hand if it's no longer going to be useful. We can jam this dress down to draw a card if we just want to cantrip with it right now. If we give our opponent enough time, they probably will win the game. So I think we are incentivized to cantrip here. But we'll do the end step because that gives us some options. All right, our opponent's moving on something here. That's a bad land. We're going to see our faith is looting. A dark ritual. Not a big lover of that one. If I'm being perfectly honest with you. This just, okay, a faith is looting. I guess we let this one ride. We could try and dress down to hit something, but I don't think that's the greatest. Our opponent's definitely got some big monsters in hand. All right, Grizzlebrand and an Exhum. Understood. An animate dead on the Grizzlebrand. Are we dressing down so they can't draw cards immediately? I think so. We don't want them getting a bunch of discard, and then getting another monster in play as well. A stifle. Um, when Animate Dead enters the battlefield. So that is a trigger I can stifle, I believe. So we may have found it here. Okay. We managed to not lose the game there. If we draw a Thespian stage, uh, I like our chances. We can cantrip into one as well. So A Brazen Borrower. What does that do for us here? Not a lot. We can start chipping away if you want to, damage-wise. It's not exciting. We can also use it to bounce uh, an animate dead. Obviously not this one, because then you just recast it. So this will put us to 8. We can put them to 11. Then they'll put us to 5. Exhume, you say. They are going to exhume their grizzle brand. Do I care about that? enough to do anything about it um if we if we daze this they just crack a lotus petal that's not really that worth it for us so we get a murktide regent here that's a 3-3 three, three, which is better than a 3-1 and other murktides will grow this one right so i think we bounce this in the end step do you want to draw seven cards that means you could die to a murktide regent is that true uh Yes, they could die to a Metide region if we draw one. Also, Grizzlebrand being in the hand means it's probably just going to go into the graveyard now. And they're going to reanimate it on their next turn. Arc of Cruelty, that's a pretty good one. Force of Will, that's also a pretty good one. So, I think we are on the attacking plan. Let's hope they don't also have some discard here. There is a Lotus Petal. They did draw seven cards, so 
The chances of them having some way of forcing their thing through are somewhat high. It's taking a while to pay costs, which... Okay, Dark Ritual. I was thinking maybe it was going to be a grief, but... Animate Dead. They're just playing Animate Dead straight up. This probably means they have another answer, though. But we do have to say no to this. Because we will lose to that. Now, if they don't have any other reanimation, then we do have the win here. So we've at least found a line that gives us a potential win. Oh, wow, they didn't have it. Or unless they're going to do it second main, maybe? Put a lethal threat into play? Oh, what they got here? Orcish Bowmasters. Okay, so they're going to ping down our borrower here. That's pretty good. That does that does do some things. Mactide is good here. Mystic Sanctuary is exactly lethal here. So we will put a Brainstorm, why not? Growth on Mactide by one. Boom. Exactsies. That's how you get them. Uh, we could have also drawn another Merc Tide. That wins us the game there. Whew. That was a really good game. Uh, let's go to the sideboard. All right. We would like to stop their graveyard hate. So these can get out. Uh, Counterbalance seems useful here. Stump Denial seems useful. I don't mind Dismembers here either because of the Bowmaster's plan. They might be on more fair creatures on the sideboard. Plus Storm also good here. What do we not like? I think Dazes is something they're going to play around quite easily. We've already taken out the Knot of This World. That leaves us trying to find four things to cut. Hmm. I guess we could trim a Depths. Trim a Dreadnought. We trim a Dress Down and a Stifle. Uh, no Blue Mana. We do have some interaction, but I don't think I want to keep a hand that looks like that. What does this hand do? This hand doesn't have any real interaction. So they've begun with seven cards. I kind of wish you kept the first one now. I don't think I can. Can I keep this one realistically? I guess we keep it, put back a Merc Tide, and we try and get something going with the Ponder. Well, our opponent knows we're a blue deck, so they're probably not just going to jam straight into nothing. But they have seven cards, so when we animate decks to keep seven cards, they tend to win the game. But they might take a turn off here to like Thought Seize us and stuff. Or they might just have it all in one go. So if they go get a Grizzle Brand here, that's gonna be pretty tasty. There's a Grizzle Brand, they'll entomb this. They'll get their Grizzle Brand running. Now what? Do I think we can beat this? No. I'm just gonna concede. All right, on the play, I would like to have the Dazers back in. So, Dazers in, Dismembers out, Trim on a Merc Tide, and part of me wants to go harder on our Fraction stuff, not just so we can actually end the game quickly, but maybe that's just kind of being greedy. Maybe Counterbalance isn't... That Counterbalance does look good with the amount of things we have of good mana costs, though. Uh, maybe... Stubborn Denial is still just a one mana four spike, which is pretty reasonable. Maybe these two are the, aren't the ones we have. Um, the counterbalance goes. Cause it's, maybe we do take up both counterbalances here and we'll bring him back in the Dreadnought. All right, we'll try it like this. Um, yes, we will not lose the game on turn one. Unless they run Cabal Therapy. Right, we will start pondering, even though we could hold up a stifle. We just want to secure our next land drop, find a way into making some threats. Um, dress down. Island. Days. Right, so we have days, force of will, force of will. Pretty good. Or we have triple force of will if we need it. We can also force of negation if it's a faith is looting. There is a petal. We're going to see a repeat of game one. They're going to crack this to do a looting. Thoughtsies targeting us. Sure. Have a look. Pretty uh, good hand there. They could take the Force of Negation so that we can't stop a Faithless Looting. Because they can Faithless Looting, if we counter it, they can then flash it back. Right. They took the Stifle. That's interesting. So maybe they're more worried about us like putting together a threat. I don't know. All right, so we've got double force of will and days. Or well, they're just really intent on having their marsh flats actually be a land. And entomb. We'll say no to entomb. 
Right, so now there's a dress down on top of our library. So I'm going to be drawing that. Are we cycling this or are we just saving it to blue card? Uncertain. I think we're probably just going to save it. Oh, we might need it to turn off a Bowmasters in an emergency. We can now hard cast Force of Negation. No play from our opponent. Thespian Stage. I don't think we copy here because that lets down our guard on the Force of Negation as a hard cast. Uh, okay, we can hard cast Force of Will and Force of Negation now. So our opponent's just going to keep drawing until they get enough disruption. They can sort of overload us. Our day's not looking great now, though. Hard cast Force of Negation. This stops it from being a thing they get to flashback. So we're just keeping creatures out of their graveyard here. Um, I think I would like a Ponder. So let's crack this. Get a Mystic Sanctuary. Ponder back. Now our days is basically useless anyway at this point. What are they doing over there? Cracking around potential stifles, I guess. I would like to cast this Ponder. We can also daze and pick up our Mystic Sanctuary. Um, okay. Uh, I like Brazen Borrower as a thing that actually starts attacking. And I like Surgical Extraction as a way of messing with our opponent's graveyard. The cautious route is to play the... is to put the Extraction into hand. And then the Borrower on top of the library. But that does give our opponent more time. I guess if we put the Extraction on top, we can always play the Dress Down and draw the Extraction. That seems reasonable. And they're unlikely to take our Dress Down if they Thought Seize us. Which means we can then Dress Down into an Extraction. We haven't seen any blue mana for show and tell lines yet. Maybe their backup plan is just to play things like bow masters and stuff. And just play like more sort of half scam. Borrower isn't great against the old bow masters though. Which is something we have to be cognizant of. Feels like they're waiting on a bow master, thinking about what could be in their hand they haven't played. So maybe we're wrong to put this borrower in hand. If we slam the borrower now. We can't protect it with the dress down, so I think we are just drawing a card. And then we'll pass here. So now we've got hard cast force of will, or we can end step borrower and then dress down to stop the bowmasters being able to ping our guy. And then we've got the superior clock, because they only have a 1 1. Right, no play from our opponent there. Let's put a threat into play and actually start clocking our opponent. Right, they're going to clean up, so they're going to put a creature in the graveyard now. We can surgically extract that. Do we want to put this flooded strand into play? That is an interesting choice because we can be doing brainstorm stuff with that card. I'm going to bash here. I think I will play this Flood of Strand. Like we have a hard cast force of will that we're kind of into, and if we have to daze and bounce the land and then pass phases, then, you know, that's something. So if we let them have this in play, but we put a dress down into play first, they will lose eight life. I don't think it's worth doing that. I think it is worth just saying no to this and trying to get instead of trying to get clever. Right, so they got one in hand. Bunch of other stuff too. So we know they've got nothing going on here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they can hard cast a grizzle brand next turn. That does play into something that we don't very much have. Now we do have an opportunity to turn this into a an island. Force of negation, not unhappy to see that one. So if they do the Dark Ritual line, we can just uh, stop that with a daze. Like we have so much permission in hand right now. And right, so here is the Dark Ritual. Sure. This is a Grizzle Brown with no mana floating. So we will daze this, picking up our Mystic Sanctuary so that we can then get our Mystic Sanctuary doing stuff. Stam to know, happy to see that one as well. Um, got a surgical extraction on top of the library, I guess. Our Storm Denial isn't looking great, but we can pitch it to Force of Will. All right, the concession. So we have locked in the positive record. We are 3-0 and with Mono Blue Phyrexian Depth Mort. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, this deck feels good. Feels nice to be playing some Brainstorms and Ponders. Haven't played a lot of them this month, and uh, I'm a big fan. All right, let's get around four and see if we can keep the train rolling. All right, our opening hand for round four is not a playable one, so let's send that one back. Um, this one is fine. We'll keep, we'll throw back the Sanctuary, and we can hold up a Stifle. 
We can hold up Stifle Days and Brainstorm. That's a lot of turn one playability there. We can do Brainstorm next turn. Do we think we stifle a fetch land? I do not believe we do. Because we don't have wastelands, we can't really go into the the mana denial plan. Alright, maybe they're scared of our mana denial plan. Alright, a second stifle. That does change my thoughts a little bit. An island. I don't think I need to do anything just yet. Boy, howdy. Let's crank this. Look at this. Let's just put the big guy in play. Who doesn't love a big guy? All right, we've got a stifle, we've got a daze. We've got a brainstorm. The brain's not doing anything, which is kind of concerning. Are you just going to show and tell us this turn? Are we supposed to stifle this? Are we supposed to stifle this? I think we are. All right. Lotus Petal. All right. Are you going to show and tell us here? Let's try and get them with a daze. They haven't played anything else, so I wouldn't be surprised if they had some interaction here. They did not. Okay. Uh, let's brainstorm here. Yuck. We don't really want these. So put this back and this back. Play this out. Crack this now for a basic island. Bash for 12. And maybe we can dress down in response to show and tell. Have another one. Okay, a ponder. This is good. They could still find a, a uh, soul land and smash us down. But, I don't know. I've got, I've got some good feelings about this one. Yeah, we got there. Okay, show and tell. We have a bunch of cards for this one. So, Stubborn Denials. Red Blast for the Sneak Attack. The Fluster Storm is good here. We are not really needing to protect our guys of not of this world, so they can get out. Um, days, less good on the draw, so these can come out. That gives us one more card if we want it. Do we want, do we want here? Counterbalance to stop some cantrips is fine. Maybe a days is just better, just having one days. It's not exciting, but we'll run with it. Yeah, so stifling that fetch land meant that our days would work, so I think we... It was very much the right play to do, and obviously it won us that game. Um, okay, we can we can jam with this. We lose the turn one show and tell, but... Okay, not a turn one show and tell. That's exciting. We have a choice of holding up Stubborn Denial, or just playing out our Ponder. I think we're just going to hold up Interaction here. Next turn, we can play our Ponder, try and improve our hand. Right, that's a big improvement from where our hand was a second ago. Let's ponder. Uh, Dreadnought, we do not want. Dress down, though. We could dress down into double Dreadnought on the following turn. So if we put... If we crack this, we don't get to do that. So if the things I would like most from this it is the dress down, then it's probably the second island. So I guess we probably put them in this order. Let's think about this for a second to make them worried about the stifle, and then we'll let it go. So I could play something like Defense Grid here, which is pretty good. A Vesuvan Drifter. How do I feel about Vesuvan Drifter? They don't know what's on top of their library right now. I think this is acceptable. Like, we can definitely get blown out here, but card has just not really impressed me. Right, so now we draw the island. Like, in an emergency, we can certainly do some stuff with a Dress Down or a Borrower. An island from our opponent. This turns into something we can then Dress Down. Didn't turn into anything. We're just going to take two. Two of your finest damages. So Pyroblast is definitely something we have to worry about. Magus of the Moon. How do we feel about Magus of the Moon? Uh, I don't care at all. Um, no, that's fine. That's what you want to spend your mana and time on. I guess they could Hydroblast this. Uh, Pyroblast this. That would be a little bit annoying for us. Are we supposed to fight over this? I don't like it, but I think I am supposed to fight over this. Like, we can just get our Dreadnoughts down. A force of will. Okay. So we don't really want this card on top of our library right now. So I think we are going to Pyroblast this, or Hydroblast this. Shuffle. Yeah, we could have played that turn a little cleaner, but I didn't have a lot of stuff. 
Force of negation. Uh, that's something, isn't it? Sure, Lotus Petal is not something I'm bothered by right now. Okay, it didn't turn into a big monster. It turns into Emrakul. We don't really have an option to bounce it there. We don't really have a good way of stopping it either. If we bounce it, we can't really uh, stop on the way back down yet. Another borrower. It's not great, is it? At some point, our luck's going to run out on this Vesuvian Drifter. Is now the time we need to... No. I'm not feeling it yet. No, there you go. Because we have so many of these borrowers, I think I will just fire one off here. And slow our opponent's roll a little bit. Like, they'll just let this happen. They don't really care about this. Yeah. A polluted delta. This gets us back a ponder. I think that's okay. Probably just play out the, the drifter again. Sure. Another drifter. Okay. Just going to get a sanctuary. I would like a ponder, please. Could have played the borrower out there as well. So let's go for this ponder. This is a good pyroblast target if our opponent's got one. They did not. Um, I like Merc Tide. And we do have a Dark Depths combo after that. All right, here comes big old Father Mercs. This makes our Stubborn Denial into a hard counter. We need these Vesuvian Drifters to leave us alone. Please don't kill me, bro. A Pyro Blast, you say? Mm. The thing about Stubborn Denial is we can use it on our turn. I think we just Stubborn Denial this. They're going to pop their Lotus Petal for a Force of Will here. Please don't do us, bro. All right. We have lived to fight another day. Uh, I do not think Wazoo and Drifter is very good. As you, and you can kind of see why. Right, this is this card that we knew was about to happen. Right, let's go to attacks. So the plan here is to bounce a guy, play a guy, and maybe get there. Right, so they're thinning their decks. There's more chance of these hitting. Have we managed to blag our way through it one more time? Ah, there is an Attraxa. This other Drifter is not going to turn into an Attraxa. It's going to attack. We will petty theft this out of the way and take two. We now have a lethal threat. We still have this force of negation held up here. If we had played that borrower all those turns ago, we could have won this game by now. It's definitely an error from us. Adepts, let's bash. This bor brazen borrower has to connect. Uh, there is an attractor on top of their library, isn't there? So we don't get to attack right now. Yeah. Right, but we have a 2020 Indestructible, which can eat an Emrakul. Uh, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We lose six of these permanents and we lose two more of them. Yeah, so an Emrakul will kill us here. Blue, green, black, white. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. We're supposed to counterspell this because now they get the Attraxa. Oh, no, that's so bad. That's so bad. That's such a punt. Oh, me and my fingers. Yep. This is bad news. Um, so they have Brainstorm. They can put Emrakul on top if they want to. Or they can show and tell. Yeah, we just punted this by not counterspelling the Lotus Pearl. That's so embarrassing. Oh dear. Let's see what they take here though. Maybe they can misplay slightly and help us out. Or play into our Force of Negation. It's not necessarily a misplay. We had this game. We absolutely had this game. We counterspell that Lotus Petal. Our opponent then is in Chumbot mode. I choose Volcanic Island, which they've already played. Show and tell, Brainstorm. Um, so they get to Brainstorm here, and then they can also put the Emrakul on top. Um, yeah, we've just punted this one, sadly, because these are both going to be Emrakuls now. Oh, God. That's so frustrating. We deserve to win that one. Well, we didn't because we made the misplay. But our deck deserved to win that one. Um... Okay, Daisies on the play are always pretty tasty. How do we want to address this differently now? Um, I think maybe we can trim a Dark Depths. Sorry, Dark Depths. And then where are we at? Uh, I like the Hydroblast to fight with Pyroblasts. I like being able to just make a big guy and race. Um, are we going to trim another Dark Depths? Maybe we are. Sorry, Dark Depths. I don't think we have the time for that in this matchup. Maybe we don't need all of the dazes. 
Yeah, let's try that. Oh, I'm so annoyed with myself. So what happens there? We we counter spell that. We attack. They have to chump block. Then the turn after they have a ponder. And that maybe sets up an Emrakul and kills us. Okay, so it wasn't. And okay, so we can keep this one. We have a turn two dreadnought. Are we pondering on turn one or are we stifling? I think we are pondering to look for something like a force of negation. All right. Um, we already have a hydro blast. Put this on. Then we'll put the merc tide because we want to use the merc tide as a blue card potentially. So next turn we're just going to make a big boy and try and slap our opponent twice whilst our force of negation does enough that we don't lose the game. And maybe our opponent has to fetch for their pieces. Or maybe they just turn one, show and tell us. All right, this is good. I don't think we are force of negationing this. Let's play the guy. Let's stifle the guy. All right, we have a thing. We have one piece of interaction. We untap into more pieces of interaction, possibly. A Lorien revealed cycling. Okay. That's generally pretty good news for us. That means they're not going to have three mana this turn. Sure. I don't think we fight over the ponders. We want to see a shuffle here. It's taken a while, which means it might be close. They chose not to shuffle. Okay. That's bad news for us. All right. So we have force of negation, and then we can hydroblast a pyroblast. If that's what's happening here. Or we can brainstorm looking for another force if we have to do that. So this is the turn. There's the Ancient Tomb. They're going to leave up the volcanic island here. That's really good. Um, this isn't our fight though. I don't think we fight with the carpet. They go to their second main. They had, they had one mana here. What does that get them? Does that get them a hard cast sneak attack? That's not good enough. A Brotherhood's End. Destroy all artifacts. All right, I would like to Hydroblast that. Okay. Yes, we got the match. Uh, we punted the, the previous game. Although, how much of a punt it was, I don't... It was definitely a punt, obviously. And I think we possibly win that game. I think we made another mistake by not playing the Brazen Borrower earlier when we had a chance. If we'd have done that, then we, we definitely would have won. So there was kind of like two consecutive issues that we had there. I don't think either one of them on its own necessarily was enough, but them compounded together because obviously they had the ponder and we knew there was, and there was an Emrakul a few cards deep, I think. So they probably could have got there if we counted that one. But even so, it would be very, very close. Um, but yeah, we did manage to win the match. Uh, so we're now playing for a trophy with uh, Phyrexian Depth Nought, which is not what I was expecting to be doing. But here we are. Let's see if we can get that trophy. All right, um, Island Ponder, lots of protection. We will keep this. Hopefully our opponent is some all-in combo deck. We kind of one piece and they crumble. That's what our hand wants our opponent to be doing. See what they are doing there. Polluted Delta. So it's not oops or spells. Are we fetching around our opponent's potential stifle here? I think so. We don't want to get caught on that because this is our only blue source. And the Grixis Delver decks are running stifle these days. It does mean we risk... Bowmaster's doing some work to us. So this look, I'm getting... Oh, okay, we're on reanimator, are we? So this pitching a dress down. We're just going to fill our graveyard and make Merktide large. We don't need to worry about Stifle anymore. I don't believe. I am happy to brainstorm here. We're just trying to put cards in our graveyard and get Merktide into play. Uh, okay. Uh, put Thespian Stage and then Merktide. Because at least Merktide is a blue card. Let's cast a Ponder. Do you like Dazes here? Um, sure, we'll take some Dazes. Uh, that is kind of awkward for trying to cast a Merktide though. We're kind of delaying ourselves another turn on the Merktide. Maybe we are supposed to shuffle that one. That was just an error. I'm just in Super Turtle mode here. Right, a Lotus Petal. A lot of mana. These Dazes look terrible now. Troll of Khazad Doom. All right, so this is Rescaminator, I believe. Okay. What are we going to see here? Reanimate. Uh, they got White Manor in there as well. We are seeing Animate Dead. We will say no to this, pitching one of our Merc Tides. This daze feels so bad now. Our opponent just immediately dumped out a bunch of mana as soon as we kept this daze, and now we're being horribly punished. Uh, we know the next card down is a Thespian Stage, which we don't want. Do we try and hope the next two cards are better? I think we have to. All right, they were better. Uh, do I want another Thespian stage or do I want a second 
days. Two days is might be okay. Because they can team up together. So we can hard cast one and then bounce the other one. And then just deploy Merc Tide and hopefully get there with that. And then Tomb. Our opponent already has a creature that's worth reanimating. So I don't think we interact with this. This might also make our opponent think the coast is clear. There is a Grizzlebrand. All right, that does make every reanimation spell they draw from this point on a little scary. So now they are doing this. We can't stop them with our days, which is a problem. Our opponent's going to have this. We have incredible cyborg tools this matchup, though. Seven cards for our opponent. Uh, I think we are done now. All right. Um, Graph Digger's Cage. Yes, please. Surgical Extractions. Uh, Stubborn Denials. These are good. The Fluster Storm. We do not require not of this world. Uh, are we skimping on Dark Depths again? And we're definitely cutting at least one of them. Sorry, Dark Depths. I like Frex and Dreadnought, but we don't need the threat as desperately. Although, because they got the sort of Scaminator package, it is a little bit stronger. So maybe we're trimming one Dreadnought. Because they can... Maybe we do need the Dreadnought to, to beat down with. How many for the Dazes? Our opponent is going to play around dazes. Let's just get rid of the dazes. Maybe I'll regret that. But maybe I won't. I don't know. Stumble Denial can be like a daze. It does a very similar job, but then sometimes it's just a hard counter. So I think it does scale better. With... Oh, just dropped something. Uh, I think uh, it scales better with what we're trying to do. We could board in the dismembers. It does kill the troll. But I think our plan is to make the troll not be a thing that happens. Or make a bigger creature. Uh, this is the mulligan. Part of me wants to keep this, but it's not right to. Okay, we do keep this. We can't keep this borrower. Uh, I think we get rid of the force of negation here. We at least have a strategy with this hand. And if they're just trying to put a troll into play, you know what's bigger than a 6-5? A 12-12. If we have to pitch our force of will here, then we, then we do. So that's annoying. But we'll see. Okay, a scrubland. A lotus petal. And nothing from our opponent. Okay. Maybe we can get there. Wouldn't mind seeing a stifle here, to be honest. Another Dreadnought. That is interesting. If we can get to our opponent's end step and deploy the dress down, then we can put 24 power into play. And that is pretty strong. All right. Let's get our island here. I would love to draw a blue card for obvious reasons. Our opponent's probably going to entomb in response to this. Right, that's not a blue card. Please draw a blue card. Not a blue card. Well, our hand does one thing here. And that one thing is put a lot of power into play. If we draw a blue card, then I'd feel really happy about this. But I think our opponent might be doing some in-tomb reanimation. Uh, no, nothing. What are they up to? I kept seven cards and haven't done anything, and it's now turn three. And there's a dark ritual. Unmasked target themselves. Okay, they're going to put Grizzlebrand into their graveyard. All right. So they get to reanimate Grizzlebrand, but I don't think you get to draw cards here. They are drawing cards. Wowzers. Okay, so basically they need to put a Arcan of Cruelty into play here. Because they're on what? Uh, so they get to block 14 damage. All right, so they've got... The Entomb coming through, there's the Ark of Cruelty, so they kill this and then we lose. If we'd have drawn the blue card, we win this game. That's unfortunate. Uh, they exhume, we lose one of our Dreadnoughts, we lose the other card in our hand. So we're looking for... Uh, we're going to one here. They have 13 power to block with. I'm going to keep going here. We've got Children of Corliss, and then we're really, really screwed. We're pretty screwed as it is, but Brazen Borrower can win us this game. If we borrow this, then we crush through for six damage. Uh, okay, this is fine. If they want to reanimate the grief, we still beat that with a Brazen Borrower. It doesn't change our... There's a Troll of Kazadoom actually, right? So they have 11 toughness. So we still win if we draw Dra Brazen Borrower. We also get the opportunity to brainstorm or ponder into it. But it has to be Brazen Borrower. Let's ponder. Uh, any order. Shuffle. Force of Will. And we are dead. Oh, 
All right. Well, we finished with a 4-1. Uh, we were very unlucky there. We had two draws to hit a blue card in our mono blue deck, and we didn't hit one. And that would have given us the thing. And that was also a mulligan to five. Was it a mulligan to five? I think it was a mulligan to five, that one. So it was a bit close. Uh, we did kind of bottom out a little bit in that matchup. We, I think we mulliganed a bit in both of the games there. But I think a 4-1 for this little brew is pretty impressive at the end of the day. So let's talk about it. So obviously the Stifle Dreadnought stuff was pretty potent. And that was like a decent chunk of what we were doing. But we got we got wins with Merktide. We did get a win with the Dark Depths combo as well. We did get jammed up a little bit with having these Thespian stages as colourless mana. But if you were playing a regular mono blue Dreadnought deck, they would have been Wastelands. So the colours didn't actually get screwed up by these at all in terms of what our deck was really doing. It was just one of those things that happens sometimes. Uh, we didn't draw our Grafter's Cage against the Reanimator player, which is a bit sad. But we did beat a Reanimator player earlier. So I think this deck is generally pretty good against Reanimator. We have good Graveyard Hate, just a whole bunch of counter spells. Um, yeah, the, the Knot of This World was actually pretty useful. Now, we had to board it out in some matchups, obviously. But the Painter player, we protected our Dreadnought, and that won us a game. We never got to protect the Merktide region. But the logic there makes perfect sense. Actually, did we protect the Merktide region once? I think we, we did, actually, with a, against a Grist. Or was it against a Pyroblast? I don't know. I think we did protect a Merktide region once, but correct me if I'm wrong on that one. So we did manage to get you know, all the things you wanted to do out of this deck. And we got four wins with it, which is damn impressive, if you ask me. Um, I was not expecting it to go this way. I was expecting us to be sort of 2-3 three to 3-2 three, sort of thing. And we were not very far away from Trophy. We even had to one, win one of the games 3-0 uh, because I made a little bit of a punt in one of them. So, you know, what this deck's doing is intrinsically powerful. I know if you like Dreadnought content, you should be following uh, Bosch and Roll. His channel does regularly often dreadnought stuff and he's very good at playing dreadnought decks and i don't know maybe you want to play someone else at some point but i think the overlap of having big creatures and not of this world is kind of an interesting one it's not really a way you see not of this world used that much it's primarily just let's protect dark depths but the fact that we can protect multiple things that is nice and if we're not looking for one of our combos we can shuffle them away we do kind of have a lot of a plus b type stuff going on but again, Thespian Stage still taps the mana. We have Brainstorm and Ponder to kind of get rid of them or find the other pieces. Stifle does work on its own. We did end up with Dreadnought stuck in hand once or twice, but we did win those games, I think. So that was all right. There is a little bit of counter synergy with the days, bouncing islands when you're trying to get up to the mana to do your Thespian Stage combo. That never really bothered us too much. It was just good to have dazes because they're a good card. And once you get your big Dreadnought in play, protecting it for two turns becomes relatively trivial with the counter suite we have in our deck. So yeah, I was very impressed with this deck. Uh, if I was to play it again, um, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what I would do if I play this again. I'd probably have to run it back almost the same and see how it feels, because we felt pretty good, to be honest. Like, we, we sort of got jammed up in the last round by a Reanimator player. We had some really good draws that were better than ours, and our, you know, we were on the wrong side of the razor thin edge of not drawing a blue card out of two cards. So I, I can't feel upset with that at all. I think the deck gave a really good accounting of itself. I'm not really sure if we're supposed to be a counterbalance deck. I was considering running someone like Null Rod in that slot. So that's something you could think about. Or just tweaking little sideboard bits a little bit. I think Hydroblast is very good right now. Um, there's a lot of decks it's, it's potent against. Turbo Muxus being one of them. The Initiative, Painter. There's a lot of things that it's going to do some work against. So I definitely think it makes sense to have that. You could run some other ways of interacting with things on the board. If you want to get really spicy, you could run uh, Encased in the Moon or something. I think that's what it's called, where you enchant the creature and they basically become a colourless land. Or you enchant the permanent or something, it becomes a colourless land. If you're really desperate for creature removal. But basically, we're just trying to make big guys and be down with them. And we did that. And boy, howdy, did we do that. All right. I'm um, not really sure what else to say about this one. Of the varying builds of monocolored depths I've played this December, both the mono white and the mono blue have gone 4-1, which was which is a surprise, and they both felt really good. That's kind of interesting. The mono green, not so much, although I did play it before and it went quite well. Um, and mono red, I've played a couple of times and it was all right. And obviously mono black's a known entity anyway. So yeah, 
you can put depths in any color you want and have a good time. And that's what we're here for in this December. There's not much of December left at this point, but I hope you're enjoying it. And oh, this video probably goes out after Christmas. So I hope you all had a lovely Christmas as well. And are ready for a new year of decks that aren't dark decks, maybe? <laughs> all right, I think we are done for today. So thank you so much for joining me on this wild ride. And goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel. A mid tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.